today we're going four rounds, each featuring a different mandatory ingredient and seeing who brought the better pairing. Now for round one, we're gonna be competing over Cinnamon Toast Crunch Frosting, and the item that I chose to put it on was banana bread. Now that sounds like an epic pairing. I also love the fact that you put butter on the banana bread, despite <laughs> yeah, yeah, the yeah. fact that we're putting frosting on the banana bread. But you can put as much butter as you want on anything and it only makes it better. I truly believe that. Wow, this looks great. Yeah. We've had this we've had this in our pantry for a while and we've just never tried it. Just managed to never get around to it. That's actually how we chose the mandatory ingredient for every one of these items, uh, every one of these rounds today. I guess I better like it because it's going on both pieces of banana bread right from the start. All right, now take a look at this. Banana bread, apparently butter, <laughs> and cinnamon toast crunch frosting. Because we were allowed to put anything that was like in our fridge, like that was fair game. So like butter's fair game, sauces, spreads, stuff like that. All right, let's give your pairing a shot. Good luck, dude. My choice is epic. That is such a great combination. That's, this stuff is so undeniably cinnamon toast crunch. It is awesome. I was thinking it was just gonna be cinnamon frosting, but it genuinely has that, like those crispy little bits in there. Unbelievable, and it works so well with the banana bread. I'm intimidated. Banana bread was a fantastic pairing, but what did I choose? I wanted to play off the cinnamon and like kind of deviate from it a little bit. So I brought a strawberry and cream cheese triple filled Danish from Market Side. Yes. Which is that does like Walmart bakery brand. Yes. Now we've had their triple filled Danish a couple of times. If you see it, you've got to buy it. And I'm not talking about the freshness guaranteed. I am talking Market Side. Yes, let me show them why this thing, why this thing is so epic, because the way that they fill it is unbelievable. Yes, like look at that. It's got, this is like the strawberry jam and then it's got like the cream cheese filling. And they go all the way with it. I totally forgot that we're that we're sharing this uh, thing of cinnamon toast crunch frosting and totally, uh, totally licked my spoon already. All right, here you go, I'll show them. This combination. The last time that we had something with strawberry and cinnamon with it together, we fell in love with it. Yes. So I'm excited to try this. Me too, let's try. I'm struggling to make up my mind here on who I think did a better job. Because this thing is so unbelievably good and the strawberry, the sweetness of that strawberry and the fruitiness cuts through that frosting a little bit, mm -hmm. and it's just working so unbelievably well. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of like a strawberry cheesecake, like with that cream cheese filling, mm -hmm. and then playing with that cinnamon. It's awesome, but as far as which one paired better together, you're taking it. I'm taking it. Banana wow. bread. That, but, that was a tough call though. It was by a razor thin margin if, I, I, if I'm taking it. But I do have to say, as far as a standalone item, if you were to buy just the banana bread or just this Danish, I would buy the Danish. Yeah, seriously, that thing is unbelievable. Highly recommended. Yes, but now we've got to move on to round two, which is Liege waffles. Let me give you this. Now, all right. Now, I put butter on that too. I was really in a butter mood today. <laughs> uh, check that out. Just a nice pat of butter. Why not, right? All right, so for my item, I brought I don't think that you that you expected me to get this, but I decided to go with buffalo chicken and do a little play on chicken and waffles. It's genius. All right, here, you grab a piece. Thank you. I'll grab a piece to show them. And because, again, like we said, any sauce that was like in our fridge or in our pantry was like fair game, we have buffalo ranch, half, thing of, half used thing of buffalo ranch in our fridge that I thought would also pair perfectly on this, being that fact that is buffalo chicken. It's a smart move. I also knew that we had that dressing and may have planned to use it on one of the <laughs> items I brought today as well. Oh, good thing we saw half of it then because like we're gonna have to make sure we have enough for both. All right, there it is. A little bit of sweet, a little bit of salty, a little bit of spicy. This should be fun. I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's gonna work. Let me get rid of some of this stuff on my plate, I guess. Let's try it. Messy, but delicious. I'm I'm telling you, man. You're you're. Good luck again. 
because I am knocking it out of the park right now. That was so good. The perfect level of heat, the perfect amount of sweet, a little bit of crunch from the pearl sugar in the waffle, the chew of the waffle. And I don't care what anybody says, Tyson buffalo chicken, frozen buffalo chicken is, is awesome. I've got to give it to you. You're killing it right now. But if there's one critique that I could make, I think the waffle could have been a touch less sweet. Like if it was a waffle intended for that creation, pulling back the sweetness would have been ideal. But we've got to move on to my item and I did go fully sweet. Very sweet. Wanna take this? Yep. So like Nate said, anything that we had lying around the house was a universal item. So, or like sauces and stuff. So we have this Nestle Toll House chocolate chip cookie inspired syrup that we got on sale at Stop and Shop for a dollar and 12 cents. We were very excited about that. And with that, I'm going to be pairing actual Nestle chocolate chip cookie dough. Cookie, chocolate chip cookie dough, chocolate chip cookie dough sauce on a waffle, it has to be good, right? I have a good feeling about it. If you've never had uh, Nestle edible chocolate chip cookie dough, it is elite. I love this stuff. All right, I'm gonna get a nice big spoonful on there. That's what you want. That's what we're here for. I'm not gonna lick that spoon, I promise. Well, we don't need that one for both of our items. All right, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a nice little divot so that I can like fill it with the sauce. There it is, chocolate chip cookie dough on the waffle, and I'm going to fill that crater with as much sauce as I can get into it to ensure the fact that I become an absolute mess in the process of filming this video. Something happened over the past maybe two months where we just got way messier than we used to be. <laughs> yeah, seriously. All right, so this full on chocolate chip cookie dough edible or edible cookie dough waffle explosion. Let's try know. it. I, my creation was absolutely amazing. It hit so hard. I'm giving myself like a 9.5 out of 10, but that was impossible to not be a 10 out of 10. Okay, there were so many things about that working. The actual flavor of the waffle, excellent. This cookie dough is one of my favorites. The resistance of those chocolate chips in there, the crunch from the pearl sugar adding to it, and then the syrup. Everything about it. it I, don't know what, I don't know what else to it say. It hit so hard, you get a 10 out of 10, you take that round for sure. So I guess I'm one, you've got one. Let's see who takes round number three. All right, round three. Again, like we've mentioned, it's items that we had around. So this one is being, if you watched our uh, Munchies Creations mukbang, then you will remember a little moment involving a tortilla boat. But Pia always says, I always tortilla call it a boat. boat. I don't, don't know, know why. A boat. And these, this round is going to be over those leftover tortilla boats. I love that you're still calling it the tortilla boat, despite the fact that I made fun of you. I can't for calling help it. it the boat. I can't help it. Um, you actually want to pass me a plate. And yeah. so what I chose to put inside the tortilla bowl or tortilla boat, whatever you want to call it, you've got mine over there. Yes, I decided to bring Jack Daniel's pulled pork, barbecue pulled pork. Which again, I just don't think that you probably would have seen coming. No. And we had obviously half of the pack of tortilla boats, not balls, remaining. <laughs> uh, do you want to do two? Um, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, we'll do two. This stuff really stayed hot. You wow. keep using all the spoons in the end of. Sorry. <laughs> I don't have any more spoons. Uh, uh, here's a fork. Oh, wait, I've, I've got this fork. I'll use it. Okay. Now check this out. That's the Jack Daniels barbecue pulled pork inside of the tortilla. Now this thing's ripping hot. That, that, that aluminum foil really kept that warm. Wow. Alrighty. Okay. Now that we're all assembled, we can give this thing a shot. I think that this is gonna work really nicely. I think so. It sounds fantastic. Let's try. It was definitely as hot as it looked, but it is, that stuff is good. A nice sweet barbecue sauce, but it's like really, really well balanced. It's got like a really nice depth to it. Highly recommend it. You went heavy on the meat today. Yeah, I know, I guess buffalo, I was in the mood. Tyson buffalo chicken tenders and Jack Daniels pulled pork. But I do have to say, that pulled pork 
is sweet. Yes, like very the, sweet. the sauce that they use was way sweeter than I expected, but it worked great. It was nice and tender though. Did you reinvent the wheel with it? No. That's a pulled pork taco. <laughs> yeah. But it's good. Yeah. I think someone's going to appreciate the fact that I brought that. I respect it. So we've got. No, no, we're gonna have to split one. Look at that. <laughs> so my choice, <laughs> we're bringing back that buffalo ranch sauce that you used in your second creation. And to pair with it, I'm going more for like a lunch wrap. <laughs> so I, <laughs> what I brought were these little artisan meat and cheese wraps that are a hard salami around a soft, silky, fresh mozzarella. Yes, I don't know if we mentioned the fact that we were only allowed to buy, to purchase one item for each round. Yes, so <laughs> my move was meat, cheese, and then the bonus sauce. I don't know if you want to show them this packaging. It's not really much to look at. Probably not. But no, that's a, that was a great way of getting basically two ingredients, getting the meat and the cheese. Exactly. Out of one item. Now take a look. We got the salami, we got the mozzarella, salami, buffalo ranch. I'm telling you, this looks pretty good. I'm intimidated right now. I put three in mine. It's probably a little bit too much. Oh, I need one. No more looks cool. Go for it. I'll join you on the three, why not? I just have one and a half though. All right. Let's see how this little lunch wrap <laughs> worked out. All right. Phenomenal. Come on. Phenomenal. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get right to the point. I think you take it. Listen, the thing about these little wraps, um, like these artisan cheese meat wraps, this was kind of expensive. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, it's a bit much, but I'm I'm owning it. The quality of that mozzarella and the cold cut meat is unbelievable. Yep. And if you are like me and you want more cheese than you do meat on the sandwich, that is kind of an epic item to make a sandwich out of. Yeah. And if you're like us and you prefer cold lunch than hot lunch, then that's also a thing about it that I, that's really working for me personally, where, where I love the pulled pork taco essentially, but that just works better for me and my preferences. Yeah, I loved it. On to round four, see if I see if we, we're either coming out to a draw or you're taking it. But for uh, round three, we had to, we had a thing, round four, round four, that's what I mean, sorry. We had a container of butterscotch sauce in our fridge because again, just like the chocolate chip cookie dough sauce, we got this for a ridiculous, like for like 80% off or something like that. It cost us like, I don't know, like a dollar or something like that. And so we each had to pair something with the butterscotch sauce. And what I chose was a Reese's egg. <laughs> you wanna take that? Sure. So if, if you've never had one of these like big Reese's products that they bring around for the holidays, essentially they have like a flat bottom that you can take off. And so I took off the bottom and figured that- well, You can't take it off, but you can easily shave it off. Yeah, well you can easily cut it off. It just kind of like pops off. And so I popped off the bottom so that we could put butterscotch sauce on top of the peanut butter and it would work. That sounds like one wild sweet creation. I've never heard of someone putting butterscotch this, and Reese's <laughs> together. This looks pretty wild. I'm excited. Let's give it a shot. That is amazing. Does the Reese's peanut butter take over the butterscotch a little bit? A little bit. <laughs> it really does. I think people will be mad if I don't show them the ratio of peanut butter in, in this product, and so I'm gonna do that. But Dude. oh my goodness, is that good. Okay, the peanut butter definitely takes over and kind of drowns out the butterscotch flavor a bit, but it's been a long time since we've had one of the mega size Reese's products, and the amount of peanut butter you're getting out of that made me very happy. Mm -hmm. And the sauce on it, it is a lot of fun. Yeah, it's really good. I love butterscotch sauce. Yeah, can't complain about that. Are we on to my item? Yes, we are. All right, my item, I'm just crossing my fingers that it fully defrosted. <laughs> but I brought a Marie Callender's banana cream pie. Banana cream pie, that sounds like, banana and butterscotch sounds like it would be an epic combination. That's what I was thinking. This thing, this also works out to be perfect so I can replace my plate. <laughs> yeah, my fingers went right through that pie crust, so be careful, it's very flaky. Oh, good to know. Now that, that topping, that's no Edwards cream pie topping. No, this is <laughs> melted completely. Yeah, seriously. All right, well, we've got to put the butterscotch sauce <laughs> I know, on. I was about to just take a bite out of it, but- Do you I... want to try it first? Yeah, let's do it. It hasn't fully defrosted. No, it is, a, it does have some shards of uh, ice. 
Yeah. Okay, that was definitely too cold to judge fairly, but luckily we had more of the pie and it's looking a lot better now. Yeah, now let's give it a, its actual fighting chance. Let's do that. All right, covered in the butterscotch. Actually defrosted pie. I didn't want to win over a win against a completely frozen pie. Okay, here's the deal. I would never get that pie again. It's very fine. But the combination of that pie with this butterscotch sauce is exceptional. The butterscotch takes that pie up like 12 notches. The banana flavor is way stronger on that pie now that it's defrosted, mm -hmm. and the butterscotch pairs so well with it. Do I think that the Reese's is a better standalone product than the pie? Absolutely. Do I think the combination of the butterscotch and the banana cream pie works better? I think so. I think so. So I'm giving, I think I'm giving you round number four. I guess that means with the actual thawed pie, I take the win.